this is my video blog feedback on the sneak animation and I'll play it through and then talk about it. Unfortunately I can't play this on Premiere for some reason. So I'll have to play it through the YouTube video on the blog. So I'll play it through now and then I'll go into it in detail. So, with this, I liked it, I really did like it, and it was a lot better than the first attempt I did with the, the sneak. Um, with it, uh, the sneak here was taken from the Richard Williams uh, survival kit, which I've mentioned before, um, and I thought it worked really well. When I had feedback from it, I was told that it could have been quicker, which I, I do agree with actually. Uh, I was kind of going for the Elmer Foot sneak um, and definitely needed to speed it up. And also, the biggest problem was these, this part, the stretch, uh, was not brilliantly timed. Um, I didn't plan it out, uh, to be honest. Um, I just animated it and I think if I if I planned it out and knew how long it's going to take for it to jump, how long it's going to take to stretch, and how long it's going to take for him to um, retract back to normal, uh, it would have came out a lot better, and the timing would have been a lot more better than what it was in here. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to colour it, and I didn't get to finish the animation, unfortunately, um, because due to time, uh, because the, the final animations. Uh, took a long time to do. I took a lot, a lot of my time. Uh, the interaction was going to be that this twin was going to have his teddy bear stolen, as you will do now, and then he was going to turn, look at the camera, and then cry. Um, which would have worked really well, and probably would have been, wouldn't have took that long to animate. Um, I think really it would have been this half animated uh, on a layer, turn around, big cartoony cry, um, tears everywhere, uh, and that would have been fine, and I think if I put it in it would look really good, um, but unfortunately I didn't, and I am uh, quite upset about it, really, and uh, if I had a lot more time, it would have been nice to finish it. Uh, but the one thing with me with animation that happens a lot of the time is that I do forget how long it takes to, to animate. Um, I don't know how I can uh, overcome this this problem that I get where I forget how long it's going to take. Um, so I think it's just mainly probably speed drawing pick up a lot more quicker with drawing than than anything really I think just like all of this probably draw a lot more quicker so then I would have had more time to animate this this twin here and get him to cry the twins are actually inspired from my twin cousins who are exactly like this and I was unable to get reference footage uh, of them because my aunt wouldn't let me. Uh, so that was a pain and it would have been great to have references from them. And I think they would have enjoyed uh, being reference animation and probably seeing them being animated. Um, also, unfortunately, I didn't get to colour this character uh, and add hair to him. I think overall this would have been a really nice sweet animation uh, when it's finished and quite charming in a way. Um, another problem is that his neck kind of goes down, if you notice. This is why it's annoying that I can't use Premiere. 
But if you notice his, his neck kind of dips down, which to me I think would have been best just to keep it just having his neck and then not making his neck disappear. I think that would have been a lot more better and I think that's just a kind of picky thing but because I made it, it I'll always notice it. So I think maybe if it's really gonna irritate me that much it would be probably to kind of sort little things like that out. Um because when it gets to the editing and I notice it, uh digitally it won't take long to change. I think if I got it in the traditional process when I was traditionally animating it, um, then it, it wouldn't be a problem and it would have already been sorted out. But overall, I am happy with this animation. Really gutted that, really upset and really sad that I couldn't finish it. Um, as I said, unfortunately. Uh, with the bit when it goes up here, um, and turns, I really like that, that right there when he turns around. That really worked and uh, I was quite worried whether I had uh, not enough frames for it. So I was quite worried that it was going to be too quick and didn't look like the movement I wanted. Um, the great thing about this is that, as I said, with this, with this module and with this idea of uh, the final brief, um, the main thing with this whole module was that I really wanted to go cartoony Tex Avery because last year I did a lot of live action animation like Disney did in anatomically correct um, animations. So to go kind of cartoony and stretch him and stretch his leg down here so he shoots it off was absolutely great and so much fun. Um, the only thing is with this is I, I didn't realise how difficult it actually is. Uh, it is like completely learning animation again because uh, it's complete different timing complete different thing overall so um, that was something really new for experience and it was a great experience to do and I think it's some of the as an animator you should have a go at because it is very widely used back in the past with Tom and Jerry and, and Looney Tunes and with Tex Avery's and and it should be something that I think people should practice. It's squat, uh, really exaggerated squash and stretch and really completely crazy over the top stuff. So it was really fun to kind of do something completely different that I've not done before. But overall, really happy with it. Um, and the only problem is I just wish I could have finished it. And that's it. And then as for here, I'll discuss about the line test just quickly. Um, the line test worked really well and I kind of went for the easy method and the quickest method because in animation uh, you do have to do it quickly. Uh, the kind of time saving is probably the best way to do it. And kind of like the time saving, like, like with twos, it was when the kind of idea of animating twos came along, it was kind of same, you do the same thing as you do it on ones, but it's time saving, and that's what they are looking for. Well, in mainstream Hollywood animation, that's what kind of came around with the quick approach. So, kind of him jumping from there to there uh, was something that I thought I could do that digitally because I knew that I was going to use a peg bar to get him to walk across. And when some of the arms go missing, when he brings back, uh, I knew that. I could put that in digitally anyway, and with the second twin reappearing and disappearing, uh, that was the reason why I drew him. Is that I had obviously a, a aesthetic look to him, and also so I knew how to animate this character around this character here, so that at this point, or when he stretches his arm doesn't get in the way of a character. Um, and also when he jumps, he doesn't jump over the character as in on top of the, the layer, if uh, digitally speaking, to me, over the layer of the other twin. So it was really good to kind of 
keep drawing him down again instead of just drawing him on the one beginning frame so that I can map out where that character is and animate this character around it but the line test really did work, it really did help and with line testing it really gives me a lot better cleaner drawings than digitally which with the other one really was a problem because the character grew as he walked across uh, which was a massive problem so now I think really my method would be to do this and traditionally animate it and then put it in digitally and with this character here, the other twin um, I was going to do a complete separate animation with a load of new punch paper and then digitalise that uh, but that everything with the line test and the sneak and interaction improvement. 